You're about to see the most valuable card in the world. Speaking of valuable cards, Heritage Auction sells many of the best cards and memorabilia in existence. Check out what Heritage has up for auction right now by going to HA.com. Anyone who considers themselves part of the sports card hobby knows this card. When Major League Baseball wanted to showcase it at the 2021 All-Star Game, they had to usher in a convoy of armed vehicles with dozens of armed policemen. Yeah, just for this one card this one small piece of cardboard and today i'm hoping to be one of the few people fortunate enough to hold this card in their hands ever it's the world's most perfect psa 10 1952 tops mickey mantle and it's worth an estimated 50 million dollars look at that card it's almost like you're looking at a secret. And it's no secret as to why this one card is the most valuable card in the world. By the way, that's Marshall Fogel. He owns the card and grew up idolizing Mickey Mantle. The boy from Oklahoma's Dust Bowl who went to Yankee Stadium and became the icon of a generation, earning himself seven World Series and three MVPs. But what makes Mantle's rookie card so special? You see, in 1952, Topps revolutionized the baseball card in many ways. For the first time, cards were larger, colorful, highlighted the team's logo, and focused on the face of the player. And wouldn't you know it, Mickey Mantle's Topps rookie card was in this set. The cards were an immediate hit, and Topps decided to print more cards than ever. The problem was, by the time the Mantle series was released, the public had already set their eyes to the football season. Tops missed their mark and was left sitting with a warehouse full of cards. For eight years, they tried to unload these cards to retailers, but eight-year-old cards were worthless because kids were more interested in the newest card sets. So what did Tops do? They dumped between three and 500 cases of these cards into the Atlantic Ocean. A majority of the 1952 Tops Mickey Mantle cards were gone forever. Out of the cards graded with PSA, only 243 have received a grade higher than five. 122 are graded a six, 77 are graded a seven, 35 are graded an eight, six are graded a nine, and only three have scored a perfect 10 gem mint grade. And one man graded all three of the perfect tens, Mike Baker. Baker is quoted as saying, Marshall's is as near to perfection as a card can be. It's perfectly centered front and back, it has four sharp squared corners and the colors are spectacular. It looks like it came fresh out of a pack. Nothing against the other two that graded a 10, but not all 10s are created equal. Last year, I met Marshall Fogel and was dying of anticipation to see the Holy Grail mantle card. Only one problem. Marshall informed us that the card is too valuable and needs to be kept away in a secure bank vault. Don't get me wrong, seeing the rest of Marshall's collection was a once in a lifetime experience. I'm forever grateful. But come on, the Holy Grail was burning in my mind. I still think about Marshall saying, How could it be so beautiful? The color, the condition, the corners. It's so old and never got hurt. I had to make my way back to Denver to finally see this card with my own two eyes. And after a handful of phone calls and a promise to Marshall to make this video intro epic. And I'm going to see the card right now. Whoa. That is exceptional. That is absolutely exceptional. It looks like it was printed yesterday. have chills looking at this this is this card is 71 years old yet it looks like it, it looks brand new the edges are absolutely perfect the corners are absolutely perfect the centering is great it literally is a perfect card wow holding the most valuable trading card in the world the thing that strikes me the most about it 
is just the fact that it looks like a brand new card. The colors are so vibrant. How was this card preserved so well for 71 years that we can be sitting here looking at it and today it's as perfect as it was 71 years ago? So now I want to bring in the owner of this incredible card, Marshall Fogel. Come on in here, Marshall. Thank you so much for giving me this experience of getting to hold this. My pleasure. I'm so glad that you're here and that you get to present the card uh, to the public. Tell me about this. How long have you had this for? Tell me the story. Well, I saw the card in 1996 when it was graded. Little did I know at the time that there could be hundreds of cards that could be perfect. Through the years, it gained notoriety as more mantle cards. Card number 311 in the 52 top set came out. And now we're here today in April 2023, and it's finally got its due. It's become a legend as you described in your monologue. It really has become a legendary card. So you bought this card, it was 1996, right? Yes. And you paid, a, in 1996, you paid a lot for this card compared to what people thought should be spent on sports cards at that time. It was the most expensive for a post-war card. It was $121,000. I think a lot of people probably thought you were nuts. They still do. <laughs> uh, but I don't know if they do anymore, <laughs> but, based on how this card has transcended. Well, and they wrote that um, Marshall Fogel is stupid. And so now they call me wisely eccentric. How often have you been able to enjoy it at first when you bought it? It obviously wasn't as valuable as it is today. Did you always have it safe in a vault or did you did you have it more so accessible to you in the earlier years? I slept with it. You did really? <laughs> I just kidding. <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I had it, uh, you know, in a secure location, uh, but now all my stuff is in a secure yeah, location. Sure. And it has to be now with, you yeah. know, the value that, that this card especially and so many of your pieces now have today. You know, when you see the card and you sit down with Mickey Mantle and you combine the two, and you know the story that Gene Levy wrote in Last Boy, it all comes together as a, a lifetime experience for me. Do you think this will forever remain the most iconic, most sought after, most valuable trading card in the world? I think so because you can't repeat the history that this man has created. Not only that, but the era that he played. And the era of the golden age of baseball in the 50s and early 60s never will be replaced. So with all that and more, uh, I think he will sustain his legend as number one. What's gonna happen to this card in the future? This card is so valuable now. Have you ever had any thoughts about selling it? Not in my lifetime. Uh, let me tell you what my thought is about the card. As you know, I'm a person who shares my collection with the community. I get a lot of joy out of seeing people to share this card. And uh, we had the card on display at the Colorado History Museum. Uh, before that, the Denver Art Museum. It's moved up in the art world. And when we did a display here in Denver, we drew 150,000 people to see that card. Unbelievable. And so, uh, my hope is that uh, generations beyond me will continue to share this card as well. I think his mantle's legend will continue to grow. Well, Marshall, I am honored. I know the audience is honored that you shared all of this with us. Thank you so much for doing this, Marshall. You're welcome. Absolutely. Thank you. This video was sponsored by Heritage Auctions. For almost 50 years, Heritage has been selling incredible cards, memorabilia, and more. Check out the amazing selection Heritage has up for auction right now by going to ha.com.